Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to be taking the Potenzig D58, which is basically just a rebranded MJX Bugs 3 Pro, up for its test flight. Now, this one is different than the one I reviewed a few years ago because this is the camera version. Now, I only see the 2K version on Amazon, but I happen to have just the 1080p version. So it uses 5G Wi Fi to connect to your app on the phone for your FPV feed. You see, I've got my phone mounted here. It's a little off center because I got to keep the buttons from pressing it on the side. My phone and turn the volume up and down or turn the phone off. But I got it already have it uh, bound ever, up to the controller and of course the app. I did the compass calibration. Every time you turn this drone on, the lights will flash and you have to do like three horizontal and three um, vertical spins, you know, and then it, it, it calibrates. The lights go green and red. Very, very simple to calibrate the compass. Um, I don't have, I don't know if I need to change these end of the parameters. You guys should see here in the, in the screen recording. I've got it set to off. Um, that's how it comes, but you can turn those on and set the altitude all the way up to 150 and the flight distance, you know, all the way up to 500. But I don't know what it'll do with it turned off, so we'll just have to see. I've got 15 satellites, so I should be good to go ahead and start recording and take it out. Now, this will be the maiden flight on this particular drone. Like I said, I've flown the Bugs 3 Pro before. But the reason why I'm doing a maiden on this, and as you guys know, I don't typically like to do maidens, um, is it's just, it's just a break in the weather today. It's going to be really windy tomorrow. Weather's going to get worse. And this battery is advertised at a seven hour charge time, which is just unbelievably slow. I don't know if it's always, it's of course, it's dependent on how depleted the battery is. I let it charge last night and in the middle of the night I saw it was charged and unplugged. I don't know how long it took, but it was very, very long and it doesn't come with two batteries. So to get a test flight up, fly this, I can't land it, go do another flight. I have to charge it and then that means I have to wait until tomorrow with the short days in the winter. So we'll take it up here and hopefully nothing too much unexpected happens. We're going to fly it around, get some sample footage, try to return to home accuracy tests, and then try to like to the circle me and follow me mode. So let's go ahead and start recording a long press on the camera button here. We'll start recording and we get a, a blinking TF, as you guys should be able to see in the upper right hand corner of the app. That means it's recording to the SD card, but I mean, that's what TF means. I got a 16 gig Samsung in the camera. Let's go ahead and unlock the props. And then I believe you have to, let's see if an auto takeoff will work. Yeah. I always thought this was a pretty smooth flyer. It's drifting forward a little bit on me, but I do have GPS turned on. Let's, I'm not getting any toilet bowling, so that's good. I always, I always have to be careful whenever I'm calibrate a compass here on that concrete because of the rebar. So I just gotta make sure that I'm not uh I'm not sure why it's let's let's see is that GPS mode? Maybe I had GPS turned off. Let's see. I think I did. I was in altitude hold mode on A. B is I must have bumped that when I was coming out. So now we're in GPS mode. That's why it was drifted, but I tell you what, it wasn't drifted very much. It's not very windy today. It's supposed to be really windy tomorrow, so. I just didn't have it in GPS hold. So that looks pretty good. It's gonna kinda find its spot where I left the sticks and it's just gonna hold there. Yeah, not bad at all. Nice y'all. There's of course some wobble in the video because this camera is not on a stabilized gimbal. Wave at you guys. But um, we'll have to see how much jello there is. I'm not seeing any real noticeable jello here, so if there is some, it's not a lot, and that's good. Like I mentioned, if you guys caught the table review overview unboxing. I mentioned that you know if you go to a, you can put a regular um, action camera on this, but if you do, be mindful that since those are heavier, that it's sometimes those that actually can cause more jello um, because it's something to do with the weight. So it's almost better to take the battery out of the drone. Now the Wi-Fi is sort of frozen up here. I can see it's parked out here, and it's come back now. The Wi-Fi, but if you uh, 
do go with a regular action cam just be mindful that you may uh, you may need to try to power it differently and uh, you know using the USB cable to reduce the jello but if you buy this one with the stock camera it seems like that one's this one usually works pretty good so I am out let's see it looks like I'm out 88 meters and my Wi-Fi was breaking up so I'm up I'm up 20 meters I'm up plenty high here so that's not great now it's not completely frozen but I would have liked to seen it you know have a little bit I'm gonna take it up a little higher now bringing it back over this way taking it right down the street here let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn it towards me and I'm gonna go ahead and let's do a return to home now and see we got a lot of glare from the Sun here so I hope it's not getting too much of my camera here it comes Let's see how accurate the return to home accuracy is on this guy. I always like to test that because, you know, if you're new to drones, um, you may really need, I'm gonna back up here. You may really need that return to home. And if it's not very accurate, that can be bad, especially if you choose to take off in a location where you don't have much you know free space around your launch pad you know you need to know hey do you have very little margin of error or is this drone really accurate and you're okay if you've only got maybe a 10 foot by 10 foot area or something now it's going to kind of hover here as it kind of thinks and corrects it looks like it's going to be pretty good i don't see any need to correct of course you can make corrections manually with the stick see i can move it it's gonna think again as it comes on down. This is gonna be really close. Looks like it's gonna be just on the edge of the helipad as it thinks about it. All right, that was really, really good. Very good for a drone that's just using GPS. Yeah, that's excellent. So let's go ahead and hold down the record. I wanna stop recording, make sure I got that saved. And we'll go ahead and we'll start recording again. Let's go ahead and do, you can do a manual takeoff with both sticks in and go ahead and just take off. Of course you can take off a lot quicker. Let's put it into the altitude hold mode and see how, if it's, it should be sportier. That's altitude hold. And let's see if I switch it into GPS. And yeah, boy, it didn't make much of a difference. Looked like it tried to maybe made a minute difference in the amount of pitch. But boy, if it did, it was very, very, very little. So really not much difference going into altitude hold mode from GPS mode. All right. Let's try some of the smart features here. Let's, we already returned home. Let's see how this follow me works. It says once the following function is working, the camera lens will be keep pointing. Start follow me mode now. Let's see, it should follow me. Let's see, don't have a whole lot of room here to walk, but it is, looks like it might be yawing a little bit to follow me, which is great. That's what you want to see. Oh, this is nice. It's, working. it's just moving a little bit, but it is following me as I walk around my backyard here. And that's what you want to see, guys. It's, it doesn't need to move much. It's just going to yaw a lot as I'm going in a circle. Now, there's no tilt controls, obviously, on this drone. I'm going to get a lot of glare if I go more that way. So I'm going to go back this way because I'm going to be looking right about that sun, guys. That uh, midday winter sun on a really low angle this time of the year and, and uh, getting to be mid-December now. Yeah, that works real well. I, I don't think this mode, I didn't have, of course, this version. When I re reviewed the initial, original Bugs 3 Pro, it was just a, a cameraless version where I put my own action camera in. But if I, from what I remember, I don't think it did these automated modes real well back then. I think I've obviously have tweaked it. Let's go ahead and press on that and turn it off. We are in GPS hold now. But we turned off the follow me. That worked really well. 
I like the fact that it yawed and it did it nice and slow and it really it kept me in the best it could because of course I don't have the camera tilted down so if you're gonna be looking down at something um, then you want to tilt it some let's see we're looking right into the Sun there let's try to go over this way What I want to do now, I just try that circle me mode. I think it's only set to like five meters. Let's see, I think it's inside here. It has max flight radius. I wonder if that, I'm not sure what, what that actually means. Let's go ahead and try. You should be able to set that in the circle me mode here. Please click flight radius to reset. So maybe that is that parameter. Let's click okay, yeah. So that's what that was, and that's what I thought. It has a and here it's going to circle the point that I told it to start. It's only, you know, a five meter radius. So to set that circle me or point of interest or whatever you want to call it, you actually have to go into the main app settings there for flight parameters, which is kind of odd. It's not letting me set it here at all with the stick. That is kind of strange. Let's go ahead and stop that by pressing it again. Take it out here a little bit, turn it around, back it up. Let's try um, going to those flight parameters and let's, let's bump that up to like 15 plus done on that. Let's see if I think when I click that it'll save it. Yes. Now let's try a circle me mode and see if we get a bigger radius this time. Should be about three times as large. I'm gonna take it up higher so we don't hit the house. Yeah, there, there it goes. Yeah, much bigger radius now. So obviously make sure you have plenty of altitude so you don't have it fly into something. Yeah, that's much, much better. Five might be fine from what, you know, certain things, depends on what you're doing. I'm gonna bring it down now and press, you just press the icon again to stop it. That's the only real, the three smart modes it has, of course, is your return to home, circle me, and follow me. And to follow me, it's just following your GPS. So, well, it's a slow descender at times. I was pulling down there a moment ago and it was hardly coming down. Really wanting to hold its, its, its altitude. Let's maybe try, let's land it here and see if we can get a couple photos. I'll be curious. I always, it's easy to forget to test photos, but for a drone like this, a photo may actually be a much more appealing to you, somebody, because you don't, you're never gonna have really good video on a drone like this because it's not stabilized. You may have some jello or something in it. I'm just gonna recenter it on my helipad. I don't know why, but let's just move it over here, guys. But the photos are usually on these lower cost drones are what you want. Let's see, I'm still recording. Let's go ahead and hold that down and stop. There, it says record success. Let's take, take a few photos because the photos ought to turn out pretty decent. And that may be the strength of this drone because you're not going to get really good stabilized video, of course. But a drone like this can be a good drone to take up and capture a nice, you know, photo of sunset or something. Of course, I don't have it, I don't have it tilted down. So I'm gonna back it up here and take a photo of me. Park it right out there and let's do a quick press. Let's see, it says photo success. Press it again. And just take it up here and turn it and maybe take one off in the distance over towards the newer subdivision area and press the photo button there. Press it again. All right, so now we got some photo samples for you guys and video. Got a little bit of vortex ring state there as I'm coming down, but nothing too bad. 
brushed motors usually handle that better than the brushed ones since they're more powerful. But yeah, this is a nice flyer. Now, I'm not testing the, the altitude or range today, um, especially not the range. So I, I can't tell you right offhand if this has those limits with that turned off or not. Um, I probably could go up here. Let's see how much battery we've got. We've got three-fourths battery. Maybe we can take it up here and see if we hit that 150 meter. Is it going to stop me? Let's let's take it over here. I always say I always keep my drones like this. I try to keep them not so that you know, I do fly in my backyard like today because I'm kind of crunched on time. I try to keep it over a backyard or my property. That way. If something would fail, it's not going to fall and land on someone's house. Uh, I've got some beeping at half battery. That's probably going to cap us anyway. Yeah, right now it says we're up about 40 meters. Let's take a picture off in the distance. This way. Since I got low battery, I know I'm sure it's going to limit stuff anyway now. I'm, a, I'm not a low, low battery. This is a, the first warning. So I'm not gonna, I need to take it up three times that height to hit 400, and I'm not gonna do that with the low, with the half battery warning. Again, this battery warning is just sort of the preliminary, hey, it's starting to get kind of low, and uh, keep it close. The second one is going to uh, really restrict your flight, uh, geofence you in. But, just like the MJX, you gotta sit there and listen to that beep, 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 until you land and turn it off. So, all right guys, I think that shows enough of what this drone can do. We covered all the basics. Again, I didn't do a range test, I know, or I didn't even get the height in there, but uh, maybe I can come back another day and try a range test, because I want to range test the Esheen EX4 for sure. So maybe if I get a good day, I can come out and range test both this drone and the uh, Ishin EX4. So this is just gonna keep on beeping at me as long as this is turned on, so. All right guys, well that wraps up the review of the Batinzik D85 GPS drone, which is of course a rebranded Bugs 3 Pro. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you have any questions about this, I'm going to set this off to the side so we have to listen to that non-stop beeping in my head cam so easily. But yeah, any questions, be sure to leave a comment or in your, you know, question in the comments and I'll try to answer it the best that I can. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, guys, so you uh, can follow me and click the bell so you know when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, side, side.